Hello and welcome, and thank you for uh, coming to this talk. My name is Hatim, and I have an NFC implant in my hand. I will start by uh, telling uh, how I accident accidentally wandered into this world. I was at a marketing uh, technology conference, and one of my colleagues uh, got two NFC implants for free. But she, um, she had to get them implanted on the event, and she was a little bit scared. She did not want to get them by herself, so she said, like, Hatem, I have this free implant, do you want one? And without skipping a beat, I'm like, yeah, sure, why not? Um, you know, as with all computer hardware that somebody gives from me for free, I just accept it. But this is a little bit different because it's going to reside in my body. That fact actually dawned on me uh, when I was sitting on the tab uh, table, uh, getting, uh, like getting the implant from the implant technician. And this is uh, kind of uh, what this w was a scene. Um, it didn't hurt that much. Uh, the technique the implant technician had, he, he would like uh, pinch you really, really hard, so you would not feel the pain of the implant going. Um, and then, of course, immediately I called my wife and says, like, hey, uh, I got an implant. And uh, of course, uh, she was uh, very upset, like, what did you do? Uh, and I'm like, oh, yeah. And, it's an implant, NFC implant. Like, where do you, where do you get that? Um, yeah, it's a website called dangerousthings.com. I mean, that should give a hint. So I don't really think about it, and you know, that's where my journey started in 2017. So uh, before I dive more, uh, a little bit about me. My name is Hatim. Uh, that's my Twitter handle. I work for a um, hotel company called uh, Nordic Choice Hotels um, at the digital arm of Nordic Choice Hotels called eBerry. Uh, I'm a hardware hacker by hobby, and uh, these opinions are my own, uh, just as a side note. A little bit about Nordic Choice Hotels. This uh, 200 hotels in the Nordic region is part of the Choice franchise, but you know they are independent. Uh, and um, we in eBerry has helped release different kind of uh, consumer features, like um, choosing your room before you check in, or uh, integrating mobile keys or self-service desk. So it's a very kind of forward-looking company in that regard. So if I'm a back-end developer, why am I even here? Um, I'm an enthusiast for this technology, uh, and um, this is not an uh, in-depth talk. Um, I will be covering in brief the implant technology, a little bit of its application, and little, uh, some of the risks. Um, by the way, anybody having an implant, RFID or NFC already? All right. So it's a fairly new technology. It's uh, getting more and more common in, in, uh, in Sweden. A lot of people are having uh, Im getting implant parties. Um, um, I mean, you can get it without a party, I guess. But uh, so, how does a ra like RFID uh, radio transponders work? So basically, there is an um, electromagnetic field generated by a controller module, and uh, that actually is um, picked up by a um, transponder, and it uh, creates uh, it uh, creates a voltage. Um, uh, due to the electromagnetic field of the controller, right? So it's a, it's a, the tag that I have here is a passive tag. It's not powered. It's only powered when some source of uh, um, electromagnetic uh, source comes close to it. And then it can exchange data. Um, so microchip implants have been, um, they're not a really new thing. They have been in, in pets for 30 years or so. Uh, but uh, in humans, uh, this is like a new thing. Um, they're usually encased in silicate glass or something that is not going to bother you inside. So, you know, you're, uh, it does not get uh, attacked by your um, immune system. It's usually subdermal. And in 1998, they started, uh, some people started doing experiments. In 2005, there were long-term use. And uh, of course, when you have something reading and writing, it can be uh, attacked by a virus. So there was a first example of a virus in 2009. Um, but that's a little bit of uh, history. A um, little bit about the NFC versus RFID. So RFID has been f there for quite some time. And it, uh, NFC is par part of the RFID family. But when you speak in common terms, there are two different things. NFC is a little bit more advanced than RFID. RFID only has UIDs, and NFC, you can have data. 
uh, like more data, like for example, uh, your um, which hotel room uh, this NFC card is allowed to open, or etc. Or if uh, you have access to gym in your hotel, um, and um, RFID can be um, detected uh, through a distance, but NFC is like very it's a near field communication, so it's in centimeters range. So that's very important distinction. All right, a little bit about the tag that I got, which I didn't even know before, like I got it, like what it was called. So it's a 13.56 megahertz, uh, so it's in that spectrum. And uh, so officially I have 888 bytes of memory, um, but you know, only 886 is uh, user uh, read read readable and writable. It has um, 10 years of retention, 100,000 writes uh, per memory block, 100, um, 100, and it's encased in a bioglass. So, uh, so it's very important that uh, this bioglass does, uh, you know, it works inside your body, so your um, uh, body does not attack it, so the uh, body is not disturbed. And um, uh, one of the things that uh, with this company they have done is that they make sure that it's easier to take it out. Uh, so you know you you but you will have to go to a surgeon. So it's rather easy to get it inserted, but uh, you will probably need a small surgery. So that's kind of a bummer. Um, little bit about the applications, and these are some of the applications that I've encountered, and mo all of the examples are from Sweden. So um, SJ, our local train company in Sweden, and um, SAS Airlines, they have done some experimental uh, things with this. So at least in SJ, you could write your membership number onto the, onto the chip. And when somebody comes, uh, like the ticket collector, they can scan uh, your um, member number. And you, you have your ticket here. So you, if you forgot your paper or your, your phone is discharged, you have your ticket. That's kind of cool. Um, so, uh, one, uh, excuse me. So, one example uh, also with uh, uh, payment and vending is uh, if you sort of prepay, um, you can actually open some sort of vending machine. You can open some basic door locks. You can access your printers. Um, so, these are like very simple examples. But you know, um, it's you can just do them with the regular card as well. So, it's nothing fancy about it. But one thing I um, encountered was like a little bit uh, with usability of these um, applications. Um, each of the phone vendors, they have NFC antennas on different places. So um, every time somebody, I, I'm trying to show like my chip, like, OK, come and read. Like They're like trying to position their antenna, and then uh, it doesn't read. And then I have to twist my arm, and it's just uh, so it's basically a cylinder that is encased inside bioglass underneath your skin. Most of the antennas that are designed are for square cards, right? More, most of the readers are designed for square cards. So there's a little bit of gap over there. And uh, but it's getting better uh, with the newer versions of uh, different phones because they also need to charge uh, like you no know, wireless charging, so it's kind of becoming a little bit more standardized. And you know the read-write capability for NFC is also in both iOS and Android, so that's kind of good. When I started, like you know, at, uh, in 2017, it was only available in Android mostly. Um, I can I can show you uh, like de demonstrate like how it works uh, if you catch me later. Uh, um, I only have my uh, little bit of my public information on my chip right now. And one other thing that is kind of bad, uh, at least with my chip, is like you can only have one type of data. As in, I can have my um, train prior uh, train booking number, right? And when I uh, depart my train and I want to put my uh, my flight uh, flight number, then I have to actually format the card and write the flight number. So that kind of sucks. You know, I have to take out my. F I mean, I I have my phone already, so why why bother? And that's like something um, some other people have also discussed. Like you know, it's it's really cumbersome. Privacy risks. Um, so. NFC is not easy to track, in my opinion. 
I mean, it barely works uh, for t with two centimeters. So it's not like you know, it's GPS or 5G. It's like you're being tracked all the time. But RFID, on the other hand, is a different thing. So one, one important distinction, I have an NFC chip. You can also get an RFID chip, which is very basic, a UID. Uh, so that could be tracked, potentially. You, uh, on NFC, you are free to write your own data. So if you don't want people to know your phone number, don't write it, I guess. Um, but the UID of each chip is present all the time. So somebody could do mapping if they, if they know the UID of the chip and the chip if, uh, if they know the chip is implanted in you. So that's something to be aware of. And um, one very important thing that is uh, happening in, different, uh, in, the uh, in, the, in the law field is that um, people are discussing that, you know, workers and um, different um, organizations should not force anybody to get chips because that's like violation of your some sort of uh, rights um, I'm, uh, there's a um, pol uh, there's a think tank do document uh, from the European Union about that so I think like that's very important that uh, it should be voluntary and it, it is voluntary but um, that's it should be in the law security risks um, so if you get a chip, like especially an NFC chip, make sure you put a password on it, right? Because if you don't, somebody else can come and write something to it. For example, they can write, um, uh, go to YouTube and play Rickroll video. So, and then they can actually lock it, somebody else. So you become a walking Rickroll generator. So you don't want that. So you want to make sure you uh, uh, lock, uh, you have your password and uh, you remember your password. I actually, um, some time back, I forgot my password. And uh, it was uh, really scary because, you know, I was tr like trying like crazy uh, for, for two, three hours. But then I remembered that I had written it down somewhere. Because if you don't remember your password, then it's useless. And then, yeah, you have to get it out um, from a surgeon. Uh, and most examples actually store uh, things in plain text, but that, that might change because um, there are new versions of the chips coming. Uh, this is one example here. Uh, this is um, 8 kilobyte uh, 3DES protected, so they, they have on, onboard encryption. So that's, uh, that's something up, up and coming. Um, health risks. Um, there has been no evidence that it can cause cancer, these chips. Um, but there's no, uh, that does not mean it, uh, you know, it, it can. So there's no evidence yet, but it's fairly new. So people are concerned about that. Most important concern is like infection, because when you get something inside your, um, inside your skin or like underneath your hand, uh, it is, it's uh, very important that you do it through a professional and in a, in, in a, um, in an environment so you don't get infected. And the bioglass can break, of course, so that's why you, it's a good idea to get it implanted between these, uh, uh, these two fingers here. Uh, because uh, if you, like, I don't know, if you punch something or you get hit here, it, this is area is a bit more protected and it becomes uh, uh, shielded by uh, flesh here. And uh, there has been some testing done by uh, uh, the um, people who make these chips. This guy, um, he actually put it in a chicken and cooked it. And uh, then he ate it, uh, the chicken, not the chip. Uh, but then, and then he tested the chip, the chip still worked. And you know, they tested, uh, they injected in the chicken and they tested under like pressure. So they have like a lot of testing going on. But again, like uh, it's not very conclusive, it's not, uh, by FDA or something. It's just somebody doing testing. And, you know, there are people who are uh, not so happy with uh, how the chips are, have turned out. So this guy uh, from Sweden, um, he very famously boarded a flight from Stockholm to Paris uh, using this chip. Uh, but a few years later, he also kind of um, discovered that the chips are kind of useless. So the risk of um, getting implanted is more higher than the reward at the moment. Bio uh, implants as a technology has a lot of potential, in my opinion. Um, it would become like even better when it can detect different kind of, um, you know, how wh what is your blood pressure or your cholesterol level, and it can report it out. But right now, if it's just uh, doing a basic exchange data, it's kind of useless. 
but you know p that does not stop people from doing a lot of cool stuff so this there is a product which is basically doesn't even store data you if you bring it close to em field it just has a light bulb so if you want to have a light bulb inside your hand you can do that with few dollars uh, there are people implanting like you know uh, creating their own implants to open their Tesla cars. Um, yeah, I mean, that's cool, I guess. Um, but, you know, these are pioneers. They're pushing the technology. Um, so, in summary, implant technology uh, for humans is still in uh, early phases. There are not many novel applications. If you want to get a new uh, NFC chip, get a new version, 8K Desfire. Get a professional to inject it. Um, and uh, don't do it to look cool, you know. Um, look at that as an experiment. Experiments can fail. And understand that the information that you share with uh, whatever information you share with the world, you, you should know that. You, we are already being tracked, so it's, it's not a big issue if I sh share my phone number, but you know, maybe you shouldn't share your Bitcoin password or something. Um, thank you very much. Um, um, the slides uh, are on the slide deck. Oh, sorry, speaker deck. I will be around if you want to talk to me. Or if, uh, I can show you how the chip works. And eBerry is hiring uh, if you are interested. Thank you.